on the roof. So uh, we got no heat call. As you can see, I got a lot of stuff up here. I dragged it all the way from over there and yeah, I cleared me a space. Always bring the broom up here, makes room. That way I'm not kneeling in ice and snow all day. But anyway, we got a leak on this guy. Uh, it was showing a CH38, I believe. I'll flash on the screen if I'm wrong. I think it was a CH38, which indicates that it has a low refrigerant charge. Um, hooked up some gauges, definitely low. I'd be surprised if there's anything in here. I'm gonna try to recover and see if there's anything in there. Um, this whole building has issues with like all of them because they use these shark bite fittings. Um, now I don't know how you guys feel about them, but uh, these are the push-on fittings. I I don't I don't know about that. Like I could I could see using the the, the crimp-on ones with the machine, you know. But uh, yeah, and the thing I don't get is like why seriously? Like you really it was really that short? Like really? Like come on, man. So but anyway, um, they're in the wall, so. There's a 90 degree right behind the head unit, which I'm really hoping that's not leaking because on another unit, it, that's where it was leaking. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, um, I think the leak's here because there was a bunch of oil on it last time. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to recover uh, if there's any refrigerant in here at all. Uh, go ahead and pressurize it with some nitrogen. Find the leak. Hopefully it's here. Cut the, uh, take this off and reflare it and, and torque it down. And then uh, hopefully that's the only leak. And then we'll pressurize again. If it, I'll probably go to lunch if it holds. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a vacuum and charge refrigerant. It takes It's 410A, it takes about five pounds. So, um, and then we'll try to reuse whatever's already in there. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So hopefully this works out. So uh, we're gonna get the gauges on and uh, get started. So he... All right, so we are at zero. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn this off. So uh, let's go ahead and get some nitrogen in there. All right, so we got about uh, one pound, three ounces out of five. <laughs> so yeah, definitely got a leaker. So anyway, uh, nitrogen time. Um, we're gonna go ahead and blast uh, nitrogen into the liquid line, or I guess that's what it's called, the liquid line, and then let it out of the get hot gas line. Um, as you can see, I removed that. So and that's just to get rid of any residual air or refrigerant or whatever before I pressurize it because I don't want anything to be in there because it will expand and contract. I want to try to have nothing in there but the nitrogen as best as possible. So this is usually something that I like to do just to clear out any leftover stuff. So, all right, well, I hear something. A surprise, surprise, it looks like it's a shark bike. Oh, whoa, look at that, man. Ooh, that's a huge leak. And no wonder there's no hardly anything. Oh, so it's just on one side. All right, cool. So I'm gonna cut that off. You guys are gonna kill me for this, but I think I'm gonna braise a new piece on there. I don't know. Oh man. Oh boy. Yeah, you guys are gonna hate me. Um, don't worry, I'm gonna try to run nitrogen through that thing, but yeah, I don't have any. I'm definitely not using one of these. These things suck. Um, this is probably like the sixth one that's leaking. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna braise a piece on there. Uh, unfortunately, the only piece of 5 eighths I have is hard drawn. And I don't think you can flare hard drawn. I'm gonna try it, but you know, I don't think you can. So this is literally all I have to work with. So hopefully <laughs> this is enough. So yeah, so um, yeah, it's gonna be a little short piece. So I'll probably just try to see if I can flare it. I don't think you can, but I'm gonna just try. But So apparently you can. Uh, flare hard drawn copper. That's like a pretty sweet flare right there. Look at that. Nice and clean. All right, cool. Well, the only issue here is I need to put a bend in it because that's the way it's going to be. So, yeah. Don't think I can bend it. I'm not going to risk it. Alrighty, so this is our old one. So you can already tell. Look at that. It's like, see how it's got rough edges? I mean, they didn't, uh, what do you call it? They didn't deburr it. Yeah, it's pretty bad, dude. Look at this right here. Yeah. So, okay. So apparently you can bend hard drawn copper if you just go really slow. I got a little bit of dimples going on, but not that bad. I already got my nut on, so I won't forget. So check that out. So that's pretty much lined up and I have some wiggle room on this so I can, uh, I can uh, move that around, that soft piece. It's sweet. And then I'm gonna, um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and switch that piece. And the reason why I'm going through all this is because I'm trying to minimize the amount of brazing I have to do. Uh, so now that I'm able to switch that and just have one whole brand new piece, I only have to do one braze point. So I'm just trying to minimize brazing as much as possible. I know it's a big no-no what I'm doing, but hey, there's no other option in this case. Um, well, actually there is, I could put, uh, I could just do like two flare, like they have a joining thing where you can do two flares, but I just don't want to add another leak point. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and deburr that and clean it up and cut that and, and then uh, we'll start to brazen. Alrighty, so we got her switched, got her cut and uh, deburred, flared. So we're going to go ahead and connect that. I know it looks like it's too long, but this is flexible. So um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get that uh, fitted. We'll braze it real quick and then uh, hopefully there's no more leaks because if there is, that's all I got left to work with. <laughs> so yeah, fingers crossed. All right, so we got it all dry fitted. So I'm gonna go ahead and braise that. Um, I'm not gonna crank this down yet. I'm actually gonna take it off while I'm brazing just so the nitrogen can flow out. So yeah. Alrighty, she is brazed. It only took me like a few seconds, so. And I'm running nitrogen, see? So um, just make sure you wipe your brazes. And we left that off, so we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, flare on and then uh, pressurize again. Hopefully that's the only leak. Oops, it's got some nylog put on there. We're gonna go ahead and put it on and hand tighten it. And then I will look up this unit and see what the torque specs are and then we'll torque it down. All right, so I found the manual online. Uh, so for five eights, we wanna have between 45.4 and 59.3 uh, foot pounds. Well, we'll have to convert that to newton meters because I don't think my torque wrench does foot pounds, but I could be wrong. Uh, and what's interesting here is it says brazing practices. So it's like flaring and brazing procedures. So I guess it's okay to braze on these LG units. Uh, it definitely says to run nitrogen, which I did. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and torque this thing down. We'll pressurize it and hopefully she holds. All right, so we need to convert uh, foot pounds to newton meters. So this is a nice little website I like to use. It's called uh, unitconverters.net. Um, and it does like everything. So we need 61.55413485252 Newton meters. Okay, so I'm gonna round that up to 62. So let's get at it. Okay, so I already got this torque, but just to show you I did. All right. So 62 Newton meters. All right, so we're gonna pressurize this up and she's gonna hold. Yes, she is. Alrighty, so we got uh, 224 point or 223.3. I just finished putting it in there, so I'm gonna let it settle for a good 10 minutes before I start my counter. Um, I've already sp sprayed bubbles on everything. I don't got any leaks here, so if there are leaks, they're probably in the wall. I really hope there aren't any more leaks. So anyway, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and then I'll start our counter and then uh, hopefully she holds. We actually have an increase in pressure and that's pretty much where we're at. So we are good. There's no leaks, thank goodness. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start our vacuum. We'll get the nitrogen out first and go ahead and uh, get our vacuum going. And then I'll put new insulation and clean up the rest of the stuff. And then we'll charge her up with some fresh refrigerant. So yeah, nice. I'm gonna go ahead and change out both Schrader cords because we know that this one was leaking, but I'm gonna go ahead and just change both just to be safe. Alrighty, so we got her down to like 350-ish. I think that's enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and valve off. And then we're going to go ahead and charge the refrigerant. Okay, so we got the 4.85, well, 4.9 and some change. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff off and then cycle it on and hopefully she works. So the last clip of me uh, ending the video actually corrupted or didn't record or something. But anyway, uh, the unit was running normally. I had no more error codes. It was heating and cooling normally uh, and no more leaks. So uh Anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Thanks for watching. <laughs>